I'm surprised you ain't see like my Cardi B impression. <laughs> <laughs> that one like, so I met Cardi B and she was like, oh, that's that girl that does the impression of me. <laughs> yeah. Hello everyone. Hola mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabe que, let's do the show. Porque I got a lot of things to do. Thing I got to go with that dry cleaner here. My kid fell. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neo Sport, Sport and Paul. You know who George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. Sunday Lawn Care helps you grow beautiful lawn without guesswork or the nasty chemicals. Get 20% off your full season custom plan. Go to GetSunday.com slash OMG Hi 20. Wait a minute. How can you... How, can, how is that possible? How is what, what possible? What is it? What is this? Well, their custom plan includes fertilizer and everything you need to easily care for your lawn. And with ingredients like seaweed, iron, and molasses... Shit, you can make a pot of green. Oh, no. You can feel good with the kids and the pets being around. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. They put molasses in. Sunday.com. Right. Put in your address, and their lawn analysis tool does the rest. They then use soil and climate data to create personal nutrient plan delivered to your door when you need it. Just attach a ready-to-use pouch to a garden hose and spray. It takes less than 15 minutes. Best of all, this stuff really works. Easy delivery and no more picking up heavy fertilizer at the hardware store. <laughs> and Sunday is offering 20% off for our listeners. Full season plans start at 120 full season plans start at just $129 and then you get 20% off uh, check out when you get Sunday dot slash oh my god hi <laughs> 20. That's 20% 20 off your custom plant. Listen, if you can get fucking Latinos to start using molasses in their lawn care, okay. that's a fucking company that you can live with. ¿Qué tiene eso, cabrón? Tiene molasses, güey. I've never seen anything so beautiful in my life. Edit the fuck out of Ponle canela to the grass. 20% off your custom plan. Get Sunday.com slash OMG high 20. Listen, uh, you know, Chicanos. We're not as much as dick size as we are what our lawns look like. Okay. So it's very important that our lawns uh, stay right. That's right, because you'd be judged. My grandfather went to Mexico, and his, the front yard was his most prized possession, which I didn't water from the time he left until I found out he was an hour away from coming back. <laughs> so I went out there, and I tried to spray water to make it look like I had been, been watering, watering, and I them. sprayed it on the... on. We had these bushes on the side that were already, like, pretty big, and I sprayed them on them to look like the whole yard had been wet. And the minute he got out of the car, he said, did you just spray those bushes with water so it could look like you've been watering? <laughs> when, I was in high, when I was in high school, the first time I went to the comedy store in Westwood, I was in, it was Cinco de Mayo weekend. I was still in high school. I think it was actually May 5th. And the first comedian that went up was Yakov Smirnoff. So he comes up there and he's like, I'm from Russia, he's doing a thing. And the first two minutes is a little bit like, you know, looking around this guy for real. And then at the end, he's just killing him, man. Mm -hmm. wow. Just killing him, just destroying so him. Oh, he was, he was great. Yeah. <laughs> at first, but like, what's going but on? in modern, <laughs> at first, like, who is this? <laughs> and then you come but, around. But no, no, but like I mean. on stage, they're like, is she gonna do a makeup tutorial? <laughs> <laughs> and then I <laughs> but that guy went, and then I saw him one time at the comedy store on Sunset in the afternoon doing his act with nobody in the room, but doing his act completely like from beginning to end. He'd bend down and talk to somebody and go over wow. there. I was in the back and I was like, wow, man, that's a fucking trip. Like the discipline to- I respect a rehearsal like that. To do that? Like to discipline, I can't, first of all, I can't do it. Because that's what we do in acting, but then to do that in stand-up In stand -up I'd love to talk to you about that. Can I go pee real quick? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, please, please. So he knew, like, was, but he knew where he was going. He doesn't get rattled like us. Mm -hmm. You're like a boxer. You know, has a plan. You can fuck oh. the first couple yeah, punches. Don't right. fucking hit. You're like, what the? You change your fucking script. Hey, I saw that thing on uh, Channel 5 you did. 
That was a pretty. And, that was my ad lib. Hey, can can, can I said he can't, can't control. Can, he, he can catch a nice dog. and can't control his blood pressure. <laughs> 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 and I didn't know. My wife sent it to me, uh, and I caught it. Uh, I was just firing, man. You know. Yeah, it, it was. Those are just firing. I was excited. I said, "Shit, Channel Five, Gil Creel yeah, called me his co-host." co-host. Oh. Yeah, I, damn that that that's big time. You still time. have to call him Mr. Lopez, but you're co-host. You mean, you mean, no, no, no. I'm not, I, <laughs> I genuflect and kiss his ring every time. They go, Mr. Lopez used to say, "Mr. Lopez was my father." I go, "I never knew my father, so I don't know what the fuck." They <laughs> <laughs> and and I oh yeah, and uh, Grant here will make a comment and identify. Did you bring Look. your clip? Did you bring your clip of you meeting that dude from oh, the news? No, they haven't sent me the link it's yet. Not out yet, right? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll get it. Hopefully, I'll have it. Uh, is, is, what's that? Some wood right there? Yes. Yeah, that that was, um, we posted this on the Instagram. This was from uh, it's Raul Carrillo at, at Raul Arts on Instagram. That dude, yeah, that, that, that uh, dude he did, like, he put up like a time lapse of this thing. It's gorgeous. It's this ph- this phenomenal. And he sent a couple of other pieces. Is of that too, wood? Right? Yes. It's, it's wood. He did. Is it carving or painting? I'm not fully. Uh, I think clearly I'm not. I artist. don't know. Painted. And he's even he's even got the beer cans in there, at the bottom. <laughs> like, that's that's a phenomenal that's piece of work. Is it too? It's remind me after we're done. Because I think You're asking me to remind you after we're done? Oh, fuck. I, remind I, us after I, we're done. I have, uh, I think I do have what his wife uh, That's amazing. sent. You know, that's one of the things about you know, either what do you call it, social media or whatever, the people that used to just draw in their rooms and go, Grandpa, what are you making? Now everybody can see, you know, now you yeah. know, nobody's talent should go unnoticed. Yeah, absolutely. Can share. You know? Nobody's talent should go unnoticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to make, can I get some behind the scenes or will you be busy the whole time? Oh, I mean, you, you can, can go. Some, Aaron, are we already rolling? We we're, we're rolling, so the, we'll, um, we can cut it up, but you're welcome to do whatever. You know? Okay, so. but you guys are taking video, so yes. I, I can. Okay. Are you, fr- are you from? Well, you want to introduce a guest? Uh, I don't want to get into the water bring, Did you bring, sli- you bring slides? No, those are some of the uh, Also, more, the more Dodgers. art here. He, right. he did well, more yeah, artwork on the Dodgers. One thing at a time. Ta-da. Yes, here, George, you want to take a look? Oh, these are the Dodgers. One thing at a time, okay? Okay. All right, joining us today on the podcast is... Let me take uh, your things away from you because... <laughs> no, those are your things. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, digital content creator, comedian, and actress, and fellow Minnesotan, which I appreciate, uh, Natalie Friedman, and also a fellow podcaster, host of the Ladies Room podcast on Sirius XM. The Ladies Room podcast. The Ladies Room. It's... Are, are we allowed to listen? Yes. You inside the Ladies Room? You, it's a lot. It is literally a group of girls like they're in the bathroom. What is the main thing oh, about women that, that they about relationships or any you know i think there's more want to say ma- person male same sex arrangements than when you were growing up maybe I than when i was hmm? you know how advanced we are as a culture but you know i don't believe that there was as many people who were living their best life as they say in the 70s and 80s yeah. well, some absolutely but then you have to live in a bit of a a bit of a, I don't say lie, but a bit of a thing where you feel, especially when you're in small towns where you feel like you're, it's not safe maybe, yeah. or not, you know, your family, it's hard to think that your family would would turn on somebody, but they, you know, they do. They do. You know, yeah. and I you mean, live that's your life got, in a closet. Yeah. And that's, do they say closet though? They did say closet. Who said oh, closet? They did say. You would probably would have, yeah. I would probably would have picked like pantry. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you say closet. <laughs> Right. It's like you're, a murderer would be in the closet, but somebody in who the walk-in is, pantry. The pantry. It does yeah. sound more. You go in there. You go in there. You're just arranging. I take the pantry. There's food in there. Checking the <laughs> expiration dates. I'll go in there too. It's all about living your best life. All about it. It's 2022. I think it is. I think it. Uh, I think it is. We're living in the times of accepting everyone as we should. And there's people know? that that do not. Yes, there are those. And, and, you know, when someone is so, whether it's, I think, politically understandable, but when somebody is just against people for the way that they look, I'm not talking about the people in my neighborhood. Look or are or who they love. Or are or who they love. I would be, I would be, eventually, you know, I evolved, but I would be happy if mine was with whoever she was with, my daughter. Exactly. It's like, then I judge the parents. I'm like, who raised you to be yeah. like this? To, in, you know, in you saw American Beauty. Yeah, 
in American Beauty was the next door neighbor father was he gay? Was he closeted? I, I, I think so. It's been a while since I've seen it, but, but I, the I mom, think it's been a Remember while. the mom yeah. was like really afraid to talk and and kind of living just like like she was being suppressed. Yeah. And very kind of, I think, which is a lot of way moms, some moms were, but, you know. This is the best intro I've ever had. <laughs> Everyone's like, what's going on? Yeah, is Natalie no, it's still in the, the closet? It's still in the, <laughs> what no, does no, she have but, to announce? But you guys have, a, you said where you have the podcast where you speak freely about Men and about women everything. And about yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about pop culture. We talk about our periods. We talk about dating, texting, being single, being in a relationship. Um, and our, our male producer is like, I've learned so much from you guys. <laughs> it's, most definitely. It, I don't know if you catch the right or wrong episode. It might be very gory. It might be, you know, yeah. girl. It's it's girl talk. It's Do girl people talk. have you guys talked about people that decide to live alone because because they've not had good luck in relationships? We, I think we've touched on like pandemic loneliness of yeah. like living mm -hmm. alone, um, but I don't know if we've yeah for life. Yeah, I don't know if we talked about like that decision, but um, that's pretty heavy. That's, to that's, that's a, a interesting topic, especially these days. Yeah, I was reading the other day about this actress who came out as asexual, and I thought that was really fascinating. Like I, it, you know, um, again, I'm not coming. Let me out be Chicano. Which one is that one? <laughs> but, Which one is asexual? That they have no sex at all. She's yeah. She wrote very openly how she doesn't have a desire to yeah. you know be in a relationship she's not defined by it she's not necessarily attracted to either gender or, you know I, I don't really fully understand it so no, I don't no, want to say it wrong but is that what's considered asexual yeah I think so and she's you can, not you can in be a asexual. desire to have sex or be in a relationship exactly. at this time in her life and I think she's, some people can be like asexual and romantic still like the, you know they can form connections right. but for whatever I reason I saw a show on TLC where sex. somebody was in love with a chair have you seen those shows no. <laughs> I'm not saying that <laughs> <laughs> George what you watch those on your about, time what, I do? what about yeah. love with a squid yeah like you, oh man did you see my octopus teacher yeah that's, That's a living thing, though. At least it's like <laughs> I think, but in you in the water, they were holding hands. <laughs> and then when the dude didn't go by, back for a couple of days, she got mad. And... Yeah. What, so what Natalie's announcing <laughs> is she's in love with two octopi. <laughs> and she needs to choose which goes, octopi has the bigger tentacle. It, 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 oh, there yeah. you go. Know. <laughs> we got That's 16 options choose. between That's the two of them. But they, he knew when they were upset through ink at his ass. We're like, I'm sorry, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you. So yes. I was, I was, I've watched your stand up. Mm -hmm. I was a kid, and I've watched some clips. But I think, but I think in my stand up, you know, I'm an only child, so I, you I, are? I think that I'm, I'm not sure who I am in the stand up, because I don't think I've really. You haven't gone on. I haven't, I haven't really. Don't think I've found who I am. I think that I'm. It's just, ever evolving. Um, but I was going to say you are so good. At improv, and you are so good at telling that. Like, I feel like I, I feel like I'm in your family. How can you tell that? I mean, I did stand up, not on your level, but no, no. like. But can you? But see right, it? maybe you did rehearse those. But moments. can you see it? Can you see? Can you tell when someone's improving? I thought you were. Yes, and, and I a have, lot of those I was, moments. and a lot of those are live. Yeah, so, so I was like, I think this is improv, and that if it because it's yeah. so organic, and, and they would and, say and to that me, how, can, "How do you improv?" doing a live show and i would would say you know like and you're very physical in a good way that thank you like the spine has discs in between the disc is the cartilage or whatever that's called yeah. mm -hmm. and in between those discs is where i improv in between a, it's like the, a the song topics. it's like a music now a little bit like i wrote a joke where they yell at kids that aren't even born yet yeah where the woman is pregnant <laughs> and goes don't think that you're just going to have that baby and leave it with me and go do whatever the fuck you're going to do. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you said, um, you know, I'd say, Grandma. And she'd say, no. Like, the answers are, no. like, I think oh. so many, I, I grew up with Russian parents, yeah. and there's so many similarities. Oh, it, like, Papa, no, нет. No. Нет. Go, you, I'm that, like, I didn't ask you yet, нет. That was an improv. I go, you don't even know what it is, but I know what it's not. I know what it's not, <laughs> yeah. But my grandmother would, and it's so funny, isn't it? Like, can you see your grandparents and your mom and dad when you do stand up? Can you can you visualize that the the the, the places you're pulling your stand up from? Yeah, I, yeah. I go to the dinner table or yes. yeah, and I, I see their faces yeah. and yeah. But I think I think that you know I have some friends that are 
Mexican, Latino, Latina, and and the similarities between how we grew up. I think it's know, economic with, for, with foreign parents. With I think. foreign parents, yeah. I, I mean, it's economic too. Like you know, yeah. this is this is the difference between like when you're starting in the '90s. You know, people would say. Well, I don't know. I didn't like it because I don't speak Spanish and I don't, I don't really kind of know that life. And then you get the show and you start to do it a couple of years. And they're like, I think he's great because it's like, you know, my parents are from the Ukraine. That's the first one I heard. Yeah. And that, really? That's the way our parents are. Foil on the windows. Right. It's, it's uh, 98 degrees outside and 111 inside. You know that we we'll used to go outside windows. to open the window. <laughs> we used to have a swamp cooler in the window that was just, it just rotated hot air. Did you, did you were, ever have a fear where, like, if it's really hot out and the parents turn the AC on as a treat, then you open yeah. the windows? I thought a tornado would start. Completely. Somebody put it in my mind that that's how tornadoes start. Really? So when I was a kid, I'm like, opening the window uh, with the AC. Are you an only child? No, I have three siblings. Ah, and they are? Uh, um, uh, older brother, two younger sisters. Oh, wow. You're right in the... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm second. And, and from Minnesota? From Minnesota, you betcha. Represent. You betcha. You Where betcha. in Minnesota are you from? Uh, so I'm from Andover, which is like a half hour north of the Andover. Twin Cities. Andover. Yeah. I'm from Bendover. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't know you were from Andover. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I'm from Eden Prairie. Okay. EP in the house. Yeah, very cool. EP. So, so both of you... <clears throat> so we're from here. We're, you're from I'm where from here. again? Uh, I'm from Pico. You're Pico. from Hillcrest or something? You're from something Pico Rivera. Pico Rivera yeah, was a right. character when I was in high school. I wanted to create a character named Pico Rivera. Really? <laughs> like that's I said, name. there was a guy, and I could I wasn't doing characters, or do I? But his name was Pico Rivera. Uh, so he's from Pico Rivera. I'm from about six miles north of here, the Five Freeway and San Fernando Mission in a cul-de-sac. Which, I didn't, know, I, lived on which I didn't know meant dead I, end. I grew up on a cul de sac. You did? Yeah. My uh, house is on the matter, edge of one. I matter of fact, we had. I also grew up on a cul de sac. Gang? Wait a minute. What? That's bullshit. Are you serious? No, 100%. Yeah. Did, were, you, did you think it was a dead to... end or was it a cul de sac? It was a dead end. I thought it was a fun cul de sac. Ours was like dodgeball. It like yeah. rounded out, so it's a cul de sac, yeah, I guess. It, we were doing a thing for the Golf Channel and we were going back to my house. I think my grandmother was still alive. And the guy that was behind me stopped. And I, and I got out of the car, and I said, what, what, what's come? I want you to see something. And I said, what? And he goes, do you know that you live on a dead end? And I said, I live in a cul-de-sac. <laughs> and there was a sign when you go down my street that said dead end. Yeah. It didn't say cul-de-sac. And I didn't know. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck cul-de-sac. Signs used to say. the realtor, right? It's a lovely cul-de-sac. Right up against the five freeway. Uh, I would be on the phone, and they would say, what the fuck are you, fucking ocean? Because all the cars going by. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I didn't know I didn't know if it was a – that. you know, I was already an adult before I fully understood that I grew up on a dead We end. actually painted a diamond so we could play ball on our dead yeah. end. Oh, nice. Did you play dodgeball oh. in the cul-de-sac? No, yeah. we played yeah. baseball. We played baseball. Damn. We'd use a tennis ball so as not to break. Well, there's not the fucking windows. baseball. It's a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> Simulated ball. baseball we're using a tennis ball. <laughs> but home plate was right in the middle of the uh, dead end, and then first base, second base would have been right in the opening, and third base was over here. And you we can't believe that so much mayhem could happen on a little street. We, this guy had a BB gun, and his dad comes out and says, hey, point that. <laughs> It was one of those pump ones where the last <laughs> one, is, the last one is like, <laughs> and he goes, point that up or down. So he points it down. There's a kid across the street getting in the station wagon. He points it down. It shoots. It ricochets off the street, hits the kid in the ear. So we Ooh. see this kid jumping up and down, and we're like, what the fuck just happened? And he started gauge piercing. And he kid. and he had the BB in his ear. No, Damn. Way. awesome man. That kid was a pioneer. I remember that was what, awesome. <laughs> hey, he, 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 <laughs> hit the ball hard. There was an old lady. She had to be about sixty-five, old, sixty-five Not years old, old, up the street, <laughs> and the ball hit her. And what do we do? Everybody drops <laughs> their gloves, the bat, and everything yeah. just runs. Oh yeah, my you know, god! Just drop your your license there. <laughs> you don't have a license, but but so how do you how do how does how do you guys end up deciding? First of all. The, the notion of coming to California, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then how do you guys manifest it? How do you make it happen? Please, our guest should go first. Vision board, meditation, visual. No, I'm in like school. A, in uh, school, you uh, were in theater, uh, uh, and you, you can sing. I'm sure. I did dance team. I'm I'm a decent singer. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say amazing, but I always did. Uh, I was on dance team since I was a kid, and I always did like comedy rap. Yeah, and I had some oh, bars, nice. and so I was always like doing that and like 
doing impressions uh, of impressions of like teachers and like doing prank calls at sleepovers. Yeah. So I knew I wanted to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like 12 years old Googling, how do I get on SNL? Oh, wow. And it says, you know, you can do Groundlings or UCB. So I actually went to New York first. I did UCB, started wow. doing stand up there. And then uh, ended up like kind of going back and forth, doing the bicoastal thing, New York, yeah. LA, New York, LA. And then finally the pull was strong enough for wow. LA. So I say there's a, I was in New York for nine years. So I kind of feel oh, really? like I'm a New Yorker a oh, little yeah. bit too. Yeah. And, and, when you went to New York, did you go alone? Did you? Yeah. Was yeah, there a big no deal? Family. Like you told you, but you drove over there? Uh, no, no. I took a flight. My yeah. uh, shipped wow. boxes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was by myself in New York City. It was wow. a big move. It was a big move. What do you remember from those times, from that time? I literally remember the moving day and like the flight and the plane ride, like so vividly, right. like never forget. And my cousin lives in New Jersey. And as a gift, she got me like car service from yeah. the airport hey. to my place. It's a big deal. That is. And it was so nice of her. And I remember having two roommates at that first apartment. I vividly remember my In like a studio room. bedroom. Yeah, yeah it, <laughs> it was, yeah. And I just, I remember walking outside being like, I'm in Manhattan, this is it. Where, where, and do you talk to the roommates still? No, no. Where, 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 Not, where, there wasn't a bad ending. It's because we because you, you because you're one of those people that sees all of the things that they probably wouldn't see. What what, what traits did each of those roommates have? Uh they they anything, par anything they partied that, a lot more yeah, than I did. Yeah, yeah. I but think they I weren't was, in comedy or anything. They were just one of them was an actress. Yeah, yeah. And then one of them, um, her dad was a doctor. And I had like a like a weird <laughs> cyst on my arm that came up. So he came over once for brunch. I had a weird cyst. Any cyst is and weird. Like, <laughs> my, health, my health insurance wasn't set up oh, yet. I was like, could man. you? I asked her ahead of time. But I'm like, could you look at this? Next time he's around. Wow. It was great. It was like, I got that perk. And what did he say? Oh, you have a he weird cyst. He was like, it's cyst. nothing. It'll go down. Warm, warm compress. Warm compress. And it went down. What is a cyst, by the way? That the, I, I wish I had a doctor in my family, but I would annoy them with every little question. Oh, are you... <sighs> I mean, here's. Are you neurotic about your health? A little bit. Like, you, I'm, I'm a Jewish? health nut. Yeah. I think it comes with, like, yeah, I Google you get a things. car. Or, like, I go down a rabbit hole and yeah. Google things I shouldn't go. I've gotten better, though. I won't, like, Google as many things. What but are I, some I'm, of the traits that people who are Jewish have that, not necessarily, but, but one I mean, of them the, is. The hmm. cornerstone trait is that we're worry warts. Yeah. But, like, every little. Th we always think of the worst case scenario <laughs> in business and everything. But I think yeah. in business, it's a smart thing. You have to look at the w best case scenario yeah. and the worst case, and then what I call the medium case. The l and then. If, as long as you know that spectrum. Yeah. What's ours right? that, we're, that every day we were unhappy? I don't have one. <laughs> I don't have one. I don't I think care. That's I, I think you might. <laughs> do you think you did you do you think you have that trait to worry I, about little things? You know or? what? My grandmother was a, would be like, I worry about you, and I'd be like, I think you should worry about yourself. And she goes, <laughs> uh, I can't help it. So she worried so much that she didn't live her life. Yeah. You know, she didn't have a good life because she was worried her. about the lamp. I'm worried that the lamp is going to fall and hit me. Right. Then it's like a sense lamp. of letting like go, right? There. There's a let sense of surrender. Let mm -hmm. go and let God or whatever your belief system is. But I think I've gotten better at that as I get older. It's yeah. like you just sur like you But you, you weren't surrender. but you weren't afraid though, right? I mean, you know, some people I was when I was a kid I was afraid of everything. And like I could not have moved if if somebody would have said to me if I lived in Denver and they said, if you move, you you want to move to L.A. to be a comedian on your own, I would have said, I can't, I I can't, I, I wouldn't. Nothing's ever frightened me except for to this day, mice, mouse, a little, a little mouse, <laughs> a little Vietnam, a little right? mouse, mice, mouse is a big fucking rat to me. And you know the you, cartoons, the elephant jump on the table. That's me. Wow. If I see, I, I'm scared. Okay, of so where did well, that about, come, where does that come from? Vietnam. Mm. I had never seen. Nothing ever bothered me, and then they show you all these movies. Then you see preparing you for rats over there. Then I saw the rats one night. A rat went like this. And oh, then, uh, oh it was it was ugly. Your face. So I'm 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 scared to death of them. So if you lived in New York City and you see the big rats oh, running by, like yeah. you would. I just saw a clip where the rats in New York, bunches of them, like flocks. They're thick. And they were big. <laughs> they got ass. They got juicy rats. Yeah. Did you ever see the rat that was taking was Pizza taking rat? a bath? Oh. Wait, no, I haven't seen And he was rat. using the soap. He was going like this. No way. Did you go, see if, see if I can find it. I think it was he, a rat. He had, he had a cyst on his arm. Ah, he had a cyst ah, underneath. He was like, hey, look at this, doc. Ah, this weird thing. <laughs> He's cleaning up because the doc was going to come back. A possum came over and looked at it. You, you know, there's that. like, I guess there's like, I, I haven't done it, but from what I've seen, there's like 
therapy for fear, so it's like exposure therapy. So oh. what if they oh like? Oh my God! I is mean, this it? Look at this mother. Oh I mean, hell! <gasps> he's suddenly up. Wait, that's adorable. He, and he's running himself. We'll link this hey, uh, in the show notes. What, what if that, you? How is that real? I mean, those it, human mannerisms. It's a wide world. No, that I'd can't look at be that real. through a lens. I would not be close enough to I look mean, at it. He's. He's taking a bath like a person. He, he like went, a, but he did the Millie rock. But he, he did his ass. Did. Too. He did it, but he cleaned his ass. Which yeah. Is, That's something I don't even do. Rat. I don't <laughs> even do it. Wow. All right. Yeah, that was adorable but frightening at the same time. I mean, that, I mean. That was crazy. Wow. I've never seen that before. That, he can, <laughs> that they do that. Wow. So your, your grandmother was a worry wart. You're a father. I'm a father. Do you think you're worrying at that level or do you have that no, let go? No, no, no. You have no. that let go level. I've let it go, With your yeah. daughter. Yeah. Yeah. I've let it go. And it's like trust in her trust and, in everything's gonna be yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, she went to school in London and then she went to school in Chicago and she's wow, London. traveled at a young age, like we travel at a young age, which I think helps kids. Yeah. Did, you, did your family travel? Yeah. Where did, yeah, you, where good, did you guys good. go to Pikes Peak or whatever? Where is it? We went to Wisconsin <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, Isn't that we, took, we took some trips. I went to <laughs> Russia to visit my oh. grandpa because he, he never officially mm. left there. So went to visit him. So yeah, we, we traveled. How, how was that to go back there? And, uh, it was my first time going there, and he still lived there. He got remarried because um, my grandmother left alone with my mom when, when they immigrated wow. here. So it was very Amazing. unique for a woman to immigrate by herself at wow. that time period. And going back to you know seeing where my mom grew up, seeing the schools she went to, it was pretty incredible. Yeah. What, what did you see? What kind of – was it – I literally saw her school, um, and then my grandpa's place, um, he didn't even have Wi-Fi. So I went to the coffee shops to get on Wi-Fi. Do, they don't have Wi-Fi? He just he he just chose not to have yeah. it. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm completely saying that. I think that. it's, I think that might be better though. I think they had like TV and well. stuff, but it was, yeah, he was still living in an old fashioned way. You know, it's funny, like you said, they have TV and like maybe there's two channels of just snow, but you prefer one versus the other one. You're like, don't change yeah. <laughs> the channel I think watching they had, that. But I think eventually they got it because then we started FaceTiming him from, yeah. so I think, yeah, it's like when we get, yeah. got there, it wasn't fully set yeah. up. But, but uh, more importantly, it was so cool to see my roots and, you know, see where my mom I grew up. Support for the Oh My God High podcast is provided in part by Sunday Lawn Care. It's hard to imagine, but spring is almost here. We're so close to feeling that soft grass under our feet, but first we need to get our lawn back. Thankfully, Sunday gets your lawn growing and helps to keep it healthy all season long. Sunday can help you grow a beautiful lawn without the guesswork or the nasty chemicals. Their custom plans include fertilizer and everything you need to easily care for your lawn. And with ingredients like seaweed, iron, and molasses, you can feel good with kids and pets being around. All you have to do is visit sunday.com, put in your address, and their lawn analysis tool does the rest. They then use soil and climate data to create a personal nutrient plan delivered to your door just when you need it. Just attach the ready-to-use pouch to your garden hose and spray. It takes less than 15, 15 minutes, and best of all, this stuff really works. Sunday's offering all of our listeners 20% off. Full season plans start at just $129, and you can get 20% off at checkout when you visit GetSunday.com slash O-M-G-H-I-20. That's 20% off your custom plan at GetSunday.com slash O-M-G-H-I-2-0. I think, uh, you know, I've never been old before. But I think that um, a lot of time is is wasted, I think, maybe be on, you know, we're in the business of the social media, but a lot of kids that spend most of their time either on their phones or, you know, um, on their computers or, th yeah. or whatever that is, yeah. that, that that's time away from almost a reality. Nature, or, relationships, yeah. or, dodgeball. Or grandparents yeah. and parents and things where, you know, I saw a meme where everybody had their phone out and there was an older lady that was just kind of on the rail watching. <laughs> right, <laughs> so I saw that. or there's like a dinner table and, and it's, it, it's, it's Yeah, sad. and there is something to, to that, to seeing. I think for me the most telling thing about stuff like that is how people who work at like Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, tell their kids like, don't go on there, don't use it. Like, or they have like extreme time limits. Ex exactly. Like, like, like these are the people minutes. making the product. They know how the sausage is made, and they're yeah. telling their family not to engage. But with they're it. like, you know, a friend of mine told me that his Wi-Fi went down when his his daughter and their friends were there, and they were like crackheads. They were just, <laughs> they were like, you got to put it. What's the matter? It's not up. It's not up. Oh Wait, my gosh. The, the, I mean, they lost their they lost their minds. Like, I'm thinking, he goes, they lost their minds. 
and they were like 13 and they lost their lost their minds is it is it almost like a like in that movie she is it a virtual her friend her her, her. Yeah. she <laughs> come on pronouns uh, um, i feel well i mean we already know that dopamine and serotonin yeah. and nor you know those those feel good addictive receptors are activated when you're on when you're getting these likes and and if somebody has an addictive personality then it's multiplied and gen but z has grown up with i these actually things. for for being yeah. on social media i i try to try to not scroll i try to shut off my phone and not be on my phone an hour before bed so yes. i can like yep. but it's yeah i i've I have younger nieces, and they're they're on their phones. Yeah, and you can't and you can't get and you can't get to them. So when you were in New York, did you did you go to did you work? Yeah, yeah. I I so I was part time nanny at first, oh. and then I so that was like survival job, and then I did some fit modeling, which helped pay the bills, and just kept and then voiceover mm -hmm. did voiceover work, and just kept building and building, and started getting on stage, doing stand up, and this was like wow. Instagram was out, but I. I wasn't really using it yet, and then I started doing impressions in my stand-up and getting the biggest laughs with it. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, why don't I put it on, on Instagram? Yes. And then it started to get some attention, and it all fit with me wanting to be on SNL. Do you know that she um, does impressions? No, I didn't. I was watching her this morning, but I didn't see any impressions. Fantastic uh, impressions. I, I didn't see any. I'm you know, sorry. you got to watch yeah. out with the word fantastic because why? It, it, maybe maybe twenty some years ago. I ran into a dude, I worked on him with a movie, and he said fantastic all the time. And then I started saying it, and once you start saying it, you Is can't it corny? fucking stop it. <laughs> I say it in emails. I say, hope you're having you a fantastic week. Should I cut it out? You can't stop. What'd you think? The, the dessert, fantastic. fantastic. Like, what the fuck? I think it's better than wonderful, though. Wonderful great, is a little. Great, solid, great. We're going to start keeping fantastic Impressive. tabs. He's right. great. I awesome think we're three one. Fantastics today. I'll, I'll, I'll keep track. Well, you keep track of Fantastics. <laughs> you, I'm surprised you ain't see like my Cardi B impression. <laughs> 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 that one like, so I met Cardi B and she was like, oh, that's that girl that does the impression of me. <laughs> yeah. And like, so, she, so Cardi B like reposted the impression I did in like 2018 so like a lot of my followers are latina the cardi b followers and like some of them are like are you spanish i'm like damn i'm flattered like <laughs> i like I'm, so awesome. like some people still don't so i still get comments like what are you <laughs> and like i'm like i'm Nardi b like what you mean <laughs> so that was a that was a popular one and she 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 kind of she amazing she put me on the That's map great. and oh. like reposted me and I, I i always give her her thank you for that because i i got like two hundred thousand followers from and when her. you're finding wow. it are you, are you wow. yeah are you trying to there's a rhythm of it right everybody has it she you cracks mean, finding the, the impression, impression? Yeah. yeah like with cardi like how i like see how my mouth is you like yeah. it's a big. <laughs> Not she don't got a big mouth, but I have to do that, and I gotta use my tongue, and I gotta like, really like smack my lips. Yeah, to get that's in. what I've noticed. When I put on fake nails, though, that's how you know, like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, and then like for for Kim K, she's like a little more still, and like puckers her lips, and she's more, she's so sexy. I love Kim, like I'm a fan, you know. And then, like when Melania Trump was in office, I just nice. look scared and squint. <laughs> <laughs> I look, I look like I'm lost on the GPS. You just look like, look like your GPS has you lost, and you're looking. That shit is for something. Eyes. Um, Don't say it's then, fantastic. You know, I know. I have to stop myself. What is it about so, that? Like the, what, where the fuck are her eyes? I think her makeup artist does a <laughs> smoky eye. Smoky eye, and and so Donald maybe doesn't really see what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Defense but, mechanism. <laughs> and uh, Britney Spears is a popular oh. one too. But I, I'm so happy that things are better for her now. You know what uh. I mean? Um, but. I love Britney. I, does your, Man, was your daughter a Britney fan? Yeah, of course. So did your um, did your daughter ever have like a wish list of people she wants to meet? And Dad, can I meet this person? Can you help me? Meet the, the, uh, you know, Hillary Duff lived on our lived around the neighborhood oh, where I we lived. Oh, Hillary Duff. So mine's in, in the back seat, and, and she goes Hillary Duff, and I'm like, that's not fucking Hillary Duff, <laughs> and it was. Uh. And then because of the neighborhood, and the Jonas Brothers lived next door. I mean. It went from Frank Zappa's house uh -huh. to Hillary Duff's house to the Jonas Brothers to Damon Wayans to Jenny Garth. Oh, I love Damon. To yeah, to all of them in that in that 
in my little in half cul-de-sac. Nice. Yeah. Like the murder so did your daughter end up hanging with Hillary? Y- yeah, came over. You don't do Hillary though, not Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, so this is how, this is the way Hillary Duff was. I did the Hollywood Squares years ago, mm-hmm. and Hillary Duff was on there, and I asked her to do my show because I thought she was older. I thought you were gonna say you asked her for a ride home. The, I think she was. <laughs> I think she was driving back then. She was so. This this is how removed. I didn't know how old she was. I said, "Come on the show. We'll, we'll create a." Car-. They go. They go. George, you know that she's fifteen. And I'm like, I didn't know that she was fifteen. Yeah, she she has she had a beautiful mature look. I think. Right? So we made her. A girl that sold cosmetics that was older but looked 15 in order the to, co- to wow. cover yeah. the thing. And, and looking at the stuff this morning, I, I saw, uh, shit. There you go. Kevin Hart. Yes. Yeah, there, there was stuff with Kevin Hart. Yes. There you go. Kevin Hart. <laughs> yeah. And didn't, wasn't there also some stuff in there with Damon? Not with Damon. A uh, different black guy. Uh, ah, ah. Does, Ke- does Kevin Hart scream all the time? Is that his thing? No. <laughs> so he produces the ladies' room, ironically. Oh, nice. Yeah, and and then we did some sketches together uh, in November. So he is such an amazing entertainer, comedian, actor. Yeah. And is it hard to do an impression worker. of someone to them? Because one of the videos I saw on your TikTok was you oh, and it, Kevin, you know, and you're I, making fun of him. I mean, obviously, lightheartedly. Roasting, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, like with if I do an impression of a man, I'm not... I know my vocal register isn't gonna completely get there, so it's more like, hey, this is my roast of you. This is my essence of you. This mm-hmm. is how I think you mm-hmm. are, but I can't do a Kevin Hart voice. But it was fun to like, you know, he's he's very like, yeah, like dope, it's dope. Everything's dope, everything, yeah, I'm in the gym, it's 5 a.m., yeah. And the laugh, right? Work hard, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of, you know, so he's he's amazing though. Thankful for him. There, there, so there are some good people to, do impressions of uh, Kim K was dead on Melania. I mean, they're really good. Yeah, and Kim Kardashian, I met too, <laughs> and I did the impression for her, and she was like, "I hope you get on SNL." And I was like, "I hope Kanye's okay." <laughs> um, no, I He's actually, not. I'm, I'm a fan of Kanye. I'm a fan of the Kardashian. I think you know, people love to be mean to them and say they don't have talent. Yeah, I think they're business women, and they all have their individual. Strength. You guys I mean, all looked bu- at each they, other. They but... built an empire. Like that's. that's did you know I was a Kardashian? Can you look up when I was a Kardashian? Uh, I, I'm <laughs> sure as hell about. To. When I had my talk, you did never. See, have you seen me as a Kardashian? No. I I don't know how the fuck they got me to do this. I went to the Teen Choice Awards as a Kardashian, in full heels full and full makeup. Which one were oh, you, or were no. you just? I was George the Kardashian? oldest one. I was a uh, Cougar Kardashian. Oh wow. Oh. The... This I gotta see. Please, and, yeah. uh, Please hold. I'm is, not gonna. Does Chris manage you? Uh, Chris, I wasn't a Kardashian long enough. We already to, to, for her to. I'll find a better one, but that is that is Stop. Mr. Lopez next to the Kardashian. That is cloud. legendary. How did I miss that? And then on the on the on the on the talk show, we had people do like a documentary. Kardashian kids. <laughs> I, go, I go, hi, I'm the oldest and the hottest. Uh, but I mean, come on, man. That I mean, is, I'd walk down the fucking hill at Universal in heels. Wow. Oh, man. And Spanx and compression underwear. Wow. Um, yeah. But they, they were actually very cool. And then um, we uh, did a thing with Harvey Levin and TMZ where we talked about all the lovers that I had that were guys. And then I got out of the car <laughs> and they did an upshot of, of my skirt and I had a penis. Wow. <laughs> And they didn't blur and it they out. All, they didn't blur it out. <laughs> and that's how you got your own TV show. And then I was already in there. <laughs> but, that's how Lopez but versus those are, Lopez. I mean, those are fun. Yeah, like, I mean, to be able to do impressions and to, you know, step out of stand-up, because stand-up is a thing, but to be able to sing impressions and do impressions with people are, oh, yeah. are awesome. Yeah. I mean, you saw the way that people gravitated to those when you, when you did them. Yeah, or even just act outs or like, you know, just I have this like super white girl character who just, you know, just, just acting out something so somebody can really feel like yeah. I'm stepping out or, you know. So, so uh, uh, with the girl from Tennessee, I saw you. What, what, mm-hmm. what are the mannerisms of, of like people from different regions have different ma- um, right. It's because my I grew up in the valley in the seventies, a valley girl uh-huh. the movie and all the whole thing, and that was the, oh my god hi is from like oh my god hi. Oh yeah. my god. And 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 that so was that the inspiration? Yeah, totally. Oh my god. Oh my god. So is that so, where, the, that's where the term ah, valley girl came yeah, from? Yeah, from the San Fernando Valley. Wow. And 
you you were probably in Vietnam, but it got <laughs> it got to be there was the Valley Girl song. Yeah. There was Fast Under Ridgemont High. There was a yeah. bunch of um, movies of that stuff, and that was all Bad News Bears was shot on oh, Seven yeah, Bad News Bears. Yeah, I think like it's about research. So like with I have this character named Dottie. So I had to research in Tennessee. There's there's Eastern Tennessee. There's Appalachian the, from the Appalachian. <laughs> it's a little faster. It's, it's like that hillbilly. It's like that hillbilly. Um, that hillbilly stereotype with the Appalachians. They tend to talk faster. It's a little more bubbly. But then if you're going closer to like. You know, Nashville, it's not going to be like that. It's, 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 it's going to be a little more dry, right? So you got to research the the area. Totally. What what part of, you can't just do a general southern. Where in Texas, Louisiana, are you are you talking fast? Are, where are you from? <laughs> where in Minnesota are you from? You know, because if you're, the, the you betcha on yeah and the don't yeah. you know, oh, yeah. that's more like Duluth. Like, but I have friends, like, growing up, like, I call them, like, the Minnesota soccer moms. They had, like, the Minnesota oh. accent. And oh, then here's my cute. mom, like, Natasha. <laughs> and I'm, I remember, like, as a, as a kid, I was, you know, I didn't really have many foreign friends. I had some, like, you know, my, my high school was pretty foreign diverse. Foreign friends? <laughs> no, but I mean. Um, no, 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 I know. Well, I didn't well, have well. a lot of friends that had parents as immigrants. Yeah. So they'd be like, what's your mom saying? And, like, <laughs> They were like, they were rude. And they oh, were sure. like, why are your parents yelling? I'm Kids like, they're the just worst. talking. <laughs> like, what are you ta- like, why is your dad yelling? Like, yeah. he's not. But, um, but the that's point, like a Latino thing. But that... I would be like, Mom, don't call me Natasha. Call me Natalie. Yeah. Yeah. She'd be like, Natasha. And then um, I remember one time oh, we went through the Taco worst. Bell drive thru, and my mom had a really strong accent. And she's like, Two Sprite. Three soft shell taco. And my friend was like, what is she saying? <laughs> and I just, like, I, I mean, I had those moments oh, growing shit. up where I, you know. And then I remember one time she came to visit me for lunch. This is like, and um, <laughs> these boys in my class, like, made fun. They were like, who's the Spanish girl? And I was like, that's my mom. But it's just like that, right. you know, they don't know better. But right. it's like that typical, that I other guess. other feeling. When yeah, I was doing the punchline in, in Sacramento, we would always drink at the club. And then we would go to... The Jack in the Box, which was like a mile down Arden Way, and then we, the guy would say, "Welcome to Jack in the Box, and I help you." And like, yeah, <laughs> hi, um, <laughs> can I help you? We're like, there's not, a, and I did the whole thing on, on one of my first, very successful. Yeah. That, that wow. had me rolling when I heard it. The first and then time. I did it on my show, the first, the TV show where I had all my my mom's friends in the car. And the guy's like, what can I, can I, can I help you? I'm like, yeah, hi, can you want, do you want, uh, what kind of soda do you have? A Coca, I have a Pepsi, <laughs> we have a Sprite. Pe- the guy said, Pepsi, a Sprite. Sprite. And then you're like, what kind of, then they said, what kind of fountain drinks do you fountain have? And the drink. guy's like, Fountaña. Why not say soda, stupid? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that did was Did you the, have those moments as a kid where you were made fun, made fun of or bullied or? I was or, always or, embarrassed of. Or were you embarrassed of your Oh. A- the accents, and maybe gran- maybe it's. I think it was a little more diverse. My, here. my grandfather worked in construction. My grandparents raised me. Mm-hmm. My grandfather was not my biological grandfather, but he worked in construction. And I don't know what the fuck he was doing at school. He came in one day, and everybody looked at him at the same time. They all got scared. Like he was in, you know. I guess they yeah. said, "Go to the, this class." I don't know when I forget. Why, why would he be there? And then all of our, you know, heads were facing this way, and the teacher said, "Can I help you, sir?" And everybody looked at the tank. And then, you know, cause, you know, fucking, he was like a. He was out in the sun dude, all day? Yeah, and then in these work boots. And you felt and embarrassed? Like, yeah, I felt Nothing. It's I was isn't always it crazy em- how you remember you know, that moment, I was always though. Very you go back to that moment yeah. and you remember it? Because. Nothing you was embarrassing like for other, me. Like I lived said. in an all Mexican neighborhood, all Mexican. Everybody yeah. spoke the same way, talked the same way, looked the same way. It's funny that it in easy. the valley, in my school, that is all, you know, I go back there and give toys now, like every year for like almost oh, 20 years. Oh, that's beautiful. That there was only one kid. With a huge head, like a water head, I guess it'd be like a water head. <laughs> like the 99th percentile head? Like, like, you know, up here and then, and, and he fucking took the bus from Reseda to San Fernando every morning because our school was the only one where he would take English as a second language. Wow. Oh, wow. So this little fucking great gazoo head dude <laughs> was on this, I mean... <laughs> And then the little the original R- jack of the, the box. RT, the RTD <laughs> would pull up, and then it would. We'd be kind of kicking the ball in the morning. Everybody would go at the same time. Great gazoo! <laughs> and he would get out of the. And he would get out of the out of the bus, and we'd all say like, Great gazoo! 
Wow. I mean, poor kid. And he had yeah. to, I mean, he literally had to, to take a fucking bus 40 miles oh every to and get back this shit. to get to get fucking be insulted by us. Yes. Wow. I mean, awful. Wow. I mean, really awful. I mean, but, but I think, you know, I don't think that you can sharpen the knives of comedy uh, if not at someone else's expense. Right. And if you don't have those, <laughs> those moments. Oh, yeah. Today he's the doctor in charge of COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So 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 today are you have you have you done have you done have you been in movies and stuff like that? Like I would say I would say that you should have your own show. I so that's what I'm working on is developing my own show. Okay. Yeah. Is Kevin Hart helping you with that? No, not at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So that's all me. But I, I would love to have my own sketch yeah, variety you should, show. Absolutely. Yeah. Get you on there, working on that. I've done some like indie films. And uh, done some voiceover. But you know, and, I yeah. think that that is a uh, good thing as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, when when my show was over, like I remember sitting there going, you know, what, what am I going to do, type thing. And then <clears throat> I wanted to do more dramatic stuff. Mm -hmm. So I started to look at uh, movies that were more dramatic. But even if it was like just a couple of scenes, like those guys were like. Uh, you know, we can't find anything that's like a big. I said, oh no, I don't. It has to have to be a big part. Be like a smaller, yeah. like a smaller part. I did like um, Henry Poole is here with Luke Wilson. Then I did like um, with Dal Balls of Fury, of course, but those are the nine one one guys. And then I did uh, um, like you know No Man's Land or River Runs Red or all that stuff that was more dramatic. And I did a independent uh, movie for a girl that was looking out here looking for to make her story like just a little 15 minute thing and uh if i was married i know my wife would have said you're not doing that for but it's really a favor mm -hmm. and from that came something else that is like really big but just as a favor like somebody saw me in that little wow in that little thing like instead of sending a, a, a on the computer a link to your bio i decided to help this person and that thing got me something that's that's maybe the it's pretty big Wow. But just doing that, where, where most people would be like, no, I don't want to do that. But it, work is work. Even Sam Jackson, you know, I did a thing, there was a movie called Hail, Hail Caesar, and uh, Michael Anthony Hall was in there, Robert Downey was in there, and there was a, the scene of the mailman that I got, mm -hmm. but then I was working in Chicago, so the the movie paid like a thousand, and Chicago paid like four, and I said, well, I'm not gonna do the movies. So I told the dude, hey man, I can't do it. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna go do Chicago. And Sam Jackson did it. This is the late 90s. Wow. Really? And when I saw Sam and started to tell him, I said, hey, man, I saw you in that movie. He goes, oh, yeah, it's just a little day. Actors act. That's what he said to me. That's and, a beautiful thing. And that's... that's I don't great. think there's any small parts. No, I don't think so. Yeah. It's like yeah. if the story is good and the characters are... Obviously, the writing has to be good. Don't, right. Don't say yes to everything. But, yeah, absolutely. W would you put your show in something that's organic to you or does, does it not matter? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to infuse like some of my family experience yeah. in there, and then do characters and impressions, and and you know I don't want to give away too much about no, no, what no. it is, yeah, but no. yeah, definitely, definitely all the things, and have have a lot of comedian and guests on. I think it's all about putting your friends on, putting your colleagues on, and is that what is that is that is that a Facebook show? Is that can you do it? Uh... How do they do? It? I mean, Facebook is a platform right now yeah, for yeah. a show, yeah. but yeah, I was thinking a, a streamer or. You know. Yeah. Are there any? Are, are there any? I do some impressions myself. You do some impressions of yourself. I do some impressions. Joe. He does. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. He'll, he'll say he doesn't do good impressions, and then he'll whip out some yes, fantastic he... impression. Let's see. No, I'll do. I'll do it before. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I can't do it if he's looking at me. Yes. <laughs> Don't look at me. Don't look at me when I do. So, it. so, um, have you have you been back to New York? Have you worked back in New York? Yeah, I've been there a few times, but I think I think. Um, yeah, I like LA. I wouldn't say I like LA more. They're both they're both yeah. totally different. But I've been back there, have some family in Jersey, so I love New York. It has it has my heart. I think I always had that New Yorker attitude, even as a Minnesotan. So it, yeah. it felt I, I, organic. I it. Just, yeah. just I'm a really hard worker and persistent. And but I love LA. I love LA. What's well, not to hell yeah? There's all these you know it's people. People though. will say you know aren't people fake out there? And it's like no, I have amazing friends. It's all about who you attract and yeah. what you're around and. You know, yeah. I, I don't, I don't I, experience that because I'm, I'm surrounded by good, you know. I'm gonna say that there's a bunch of fucking assholes. In I mean, yeah, sense. they're everywhere yeah. though, not just LA. They're everywhere. You can't just say they're well, all. Well, well, I only, I only live in LA, so I, I don't worry about the ones that are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the ones like, 
when I lived, when I lived, was growing up over here, nobody was an asshole. Like when I was growing up, nobody was. Maybe they might say, "Hey, don't go on my yard. Don't ride your bike on my yard." But in the neighborhood that I live in, that I wanted to live in, maybe from the time I was in fifth grade, these are the worst fucking people that you can imagine. Really? I mean, just you know, I've been there since 2014. They look at me like they don't. They can't believe I live there. That's first of all. That's number one, mm -hmm. and you can't hide that face. Yeah. That you, you know they come down. If they know you're there, they're just walking. Mm -hmm. But I, I I live kind of there's a little, and they walk downhill, and they're like this, <laughs> and that's the this like motherfucker don't live there. Like just staring, judging. Huh? They don't even pretend. They just they don't pretend. I had a I have a weed party at my house, or I did before the pandemic every year. Mm -hmm. Amazing, and I had a logo of me jumping in the pool, and the splash is a is a is a marijuana leaf. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then on the Neighbor Next Door app, they said, I saw this. <laughs> Who lives in the house that had the marijuana leaf and, and all this music coming out of there? And, you know, <laughs> what is that saying to our kids in the neighborhood? I live up a fucking hill. Ain't no kids Right. It's around. saying to the kids, enjoy your what life. Is, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, they're just everything is about bitching about everything. Yeah, you know? that'll happen. My daughter... You. Today, are you sure she's your daughter? Lives in the same house that I grew up in. <laughs> really? Oh, she does. Oh, really? Yes. When my uh, <laughs> when my parents passed away, when my dad passed away first. When my mom passed away, uh, I See, was with me with, with Latinos. Before we get to the actual subject, we have to tell you who's not around yeah, anymore. There's a it bunch was, of brackets. Yeah. <laughs> it was up to me to sell the house and divide it between my six siblings, and so when I got everything together, put the house up for sale, my daughter says, "I want to buy it." Too many of my friends uh, have children, they're married, and they're still living in an apartment. I don't have a husband, I don't have kids, but I want to buy the house so when I do get married, I have something to move Did into. Did she save money? She saved the money, she bought the house, rented it out until she was ready, now she's there, two kids and an old man, and oh, they live in the wow. same house that I grew up in. Oh, wow. On the same cul-de-sac. That's a the dime, thing. The baseball diamond is no longer painted on the street, but <laughs> same cul-de-sac. That's pretty good to keep it in the in the keep it in the family home. She yeah. wanted it, so it, it's as long as they're happy. I don't. I really don't care. But same neighborhood, same everything. That's nice to keep it in the. Family. How did you decide to? Do you guys look alike a little bit? Is that from the area? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one beer, you guys look alike. Uh, <laughs> how, how did you decide to? But you, but to, you weren't an actor, were you? No, no, not at all. So I actually came up thinking I'd be like a physics science sort of guy. I was in. I went to college at Johns Hopkins. I thought I was going to do all that sort of shit. Wow. Had a total quarter life crisis. It was like not at all what I really wanted quarter to do life. with myself. Yeah, I, mean, that I was nice like to be back there? nineteen at the time. <laughs> Um, and then I was just, I'd always loved comedy. I had always like loved writing and stuff like that. So Who did really, you love in comedy? Uh, David Letterman. David Letterman was like my first wow. love. And then I got into um, very into, like Louis C.K., um, John Mulaney for a long time, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. Made it my mission to become a comedy writer. That could only pretty much happen in one place, Los Angeles. So I moved out here. I was also listening to podcasts at the time in the back. It was like 2015 when I'm like, man, podcast it's, it's too late. I should have had a podcast yeah. at this point. <laughs> I know. Flash forward to 2022, and and here I am. I'm, and I'm, you know, I get to do this. I get to work at ATC where we make all sorts of comedy content. Like I'm, I'm blessed. I'm living my dream. Want me to Amazing. tell you a David Letterman story? I was in front of the comedy yeah. store probably like 1981, and Harry Mandel and David Letterman and. Um, like Argus Hamilton were all there, but I see David Letterman and I'm like, oh shit, it's fucking David Letterman. So I was too scared to go up and um, ask him for an autograph. So a homeless guy comes by, I said, hey man, I gave him a pen and a card. I said, can you go ask that guy for his autograph? And he goes up there and David Letterman turns around and he sees this dude and he's like, yeah, he writes it. And he said, beat it, you deadbeat. <laughs> and, he wrote, and, he, and he wrote and he wrote David Brenner. Uh, <laughs> he fucking wrote. Do you still have that? I still have it. That's wow. Incredible. Beat it, you dead Did you beat tell David him Brenner. That story? That I told incredible. him. He didn't give a fuck. <laughs> well, David not Brenner. Anymore. That's when you could. That's when you. you he's so weird now. That you, David yeah. Brenner said one of the funniest things I've ever heard. He About sitting on the newspaper, traveling. Yes, sitting on the newspaper. What's that? It was. Would you care? Here's, a, here's, here's David Brenner. Yeah, Go ahead. He, he was on a subway. He says the subways were really dirty at that time. He says, yeah. so I got the newspaper and I put it down. Then we got my clothes there. So I sat down on the newspaper and some pageant came up and says, hey, excuse me, buddy. <laughs> you, using, you reading that newspaper? He says, yes. If you don't mind, yes, I am. He stood up, changed the page, and sat back down. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. That was, uh, those are our era. Did of you shit guys put that. newspapers on the toilets growing up? 
no. in public places. <laughs> I clean the windows when you. No, not newspapers. But. I, I don't put anything. Is it? I, <laughs> All those I never gaskets did. in the thing. Yeah. Nobody yeah. Yeah. covers. No. Well, yeah. Guys, I tell you what, we only had an hour today, and if you believe it, we already hit it. This is it. What do you mean? For the pot, this we've been in here for an hour. And that's really? What we had today, yeah. Oh. So we have to end so on. We, did you guys put newspapers on toilets? I mean, we sh- you should tell the people. Why where you to find somebody you. else coming? We got to wrap this up. Yeah, the studio is, is oh. booked. Um, oh, amazing! Was it entertaining? Of course. I it was. But also, I, I mean, like was. I don't speak for you. I'd love to have you we, back and have like a oh, we yeah. got more time. I, yeah, we this talked was, about mice and accents and Russians this was and Mexicans. The funniest. I thought we were. Sure. Have, this was. Oh. This is the fastest hour I've. I thought we were in here for fifteen minutes, and I got a text from Aaron being like, "Hey, Grant, check." And I'm I'm honored to be here. I'm I'm a fan. I'm a fan of yours. So, um, but I'm Natalie Friedman. Yeah. Uh, Friedman is spelt like fried man. Don't don't fuck it up. Don't mess it up. Sorry, excuse my French. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everything. What are some of your favorite foods? Oh, that's tough. I I love everything. Um, I'm very adventurous. Like I love organ meat and like liver and like steak and French food and escargot and you know I love all that. Everybody used to eat liver back. Then. What the fuck? I didn't have iron and stuff. I've it's never eaten liver. I don't you know like. I didn't like it do then. Don't like it today. I went to the Union Square Farmers Market. There was a specific stand. I would go and get lamb kidneys and cook them, and they're delicious. Wow. I, I'm telling you, organ meat. Is underrated. That's what, how our ancestors ate. I'll keep my organ meat on my crazy shot. Always holes. talking about this. But when you boil them, like there's some weird foam that goes to the top. No. <laughs> what, what, what? No, that doesn't <laughs> happen. <laughs> some weird foam. <laughs> what some would shit you up there. I'm like, what? The, you get this? Don't look at that. You know, like, oh, it's just brain so, foam. I mean, we're going to eat that shit later on. Like, oh. Oh, Those are the neurons in the brain. Well, thank nice you for to, having me. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me.